I never thought life could be so picture perfect. My name is Claire, and just six months ago, I married the love of my life, Alex. We're both 28, ambitious, and we've been together since college. We recently bought a cozy house in the suburbs, a place we could truly call our own. Alex works in finance, and I'm in marketing. We're the couple that has it all, or so it seemed. One evening, I was setting the table for dinner, waiting for Alex to come home. He'd been working late a lot lately. Just then, my younger sister Lily dropped by. She lives nearby with her husband, Mike. Lily's always been more than a sister to me. She's my confidant, my best friend. Hey, Claire, dinner for two again? Lily asked as she breezed into the kitchen. I forced a smile. Yeah, Alex has been swamped at work, lots of late nights. She grabbed an apple from the fruit bowl and sat at the kitchen island. You worry too much, sis. Alex is just climbing that corporate ladder. You should be proud. I shrugged, pouring us both a glass of wine. I guess you're right, it's just... He seems so distant lately. Lily sipped her wine, her brows furrowing a bit. Distant how? I sighed, picking at my salad. He's just not himself. Short answers, always tired, and when he's home, it's like he's not really here. Lily reached across the table, giving my hand a reassuring squeeze. Work can be a beast. Give it some time. He's probably just stressed. Yeah, maybe. I tried to shake off the feeling of unease. The front door opened and Alex walked in, looking tired but managing a smile. Hey, love. Hey, Lily. Lily waved. Hey, workaholic. You're missing out on your wife's amazing cooking. Alex chuckled, hanging his coat. I know, I'm the worst. Sorry, babe. Work's just crazy right now. I smiled weakly. It's okay, dinner's ready. We sat down to eat, but the conversation was forced. Alex seemed a million miles away, lost in his thoughts. After dinner, he excused himself to make some calls for work. I cleaned up, feeling a knot of worry in my stomach. Lily watched me for a moment. Claire, don't let this get to you. He's just busy, it happens. I nodded, not entirely convinced. You're probably right. As I watched Alex talking on the phone from the living room, his expression serious and distant, I couldn't help but wonder if Lily was just trying to keep me from worrying. Little did I know, this was just the beginning. The week slipped by, and Alex's late nights became the new normal. It was a cold Tuesday evening, and I was sitting on the couch, staring at my phone. It was almost 10 p.m., and Alex wasn't home yet. My concern was turning into frustration, just then, my phone buzzed. It was Lily. Hey, Claire, still up? Her voice was light, but I could hear the concern. Yeah, just waiting for Alex. He's late again. My voice sounded more annoyed than I intended. Lily was silent for a moment. Still at work? That's what he says, I replied, my tone skeptical. He's always got some excuse. Busy, meeting, you name it. Have you talked to him about it? I mean, really talked? I sighed, rubbing my temples. I've tried, Lil. It's like talking to a wall. He just brushes it off and says I'm worrying over nothing. There was a pause, and then Lily said, maybe he's just under a lot of pressure. You know how his job is. I rolled my eyes, even though she couldn't see me. I know, I know, but it's more than that. He's different, distant, and when he does talk, it's like he's annoyed with every question I ask. Look, Claire, don't work yourself up. Stress isn't good for you. Just try to talk to him again. Be direct. Tell him how you feel. Yeah, I'll try. I wasn't convinced it would change anything. When Alex finally came home that night, I was waiting for him in the living room. He looked exhausted, and my heart softened a bit, but I needed answers. Alex, we need to talk, I said trying to keep my voice steady. He looked surprised, but nodded, sitting down across from me. What's up? It's about these late nights at work and your trips. It's like you're not here even when you are. It's affecting us, our marriage. Alex ran a hand through his hair. Claire, I told you, work is just crazy right now. I'm trying to handle a lot. But that's just it, Alex. It's always work. You've changed. We barely talk, and when we do, it feels like you're miles away. He sighed, frustration evident in his voice. 
I'm doing this for us, for our future. Can't you see that? I'm under a lot of pressure. I get that, but it feels like you're pushing me away. I miss us, Alex, how we used to be. He stood up abruptly, his expression hardening. I don't have time for this right now, Claire. I'm tired and I have an early morning. And with that, he walked away, leaving me sitting there, feeling more alone than ever. I went to bed that night with a heavy heart, wondering if my marriage was as perfect as I once thought. The constant stress and worry had taken a toll on me. My health, which I'd always taken for granted, betrayed me. A sharp, unyielding pain in my stomach landed me in the hospital. As I lay in the sterile hospital bed, the reality of my situation began to sink in. Two weeks of white walls, beeping machines, and too many doctors. Lily was my frequent visitor, always trying to lift my spirits. Hey sis, how are you feeling today? Her voice was a mix of concern and forced cheerfulness. I managed a weak smile. Been better, Lil. This place is getting to me. She sat down beside my bed, holding my hand. Alex been by? The question stung. No, he's busy as always. Lily frowned. That's not right, Claire. He should be here. I looked away, feeling a lump in my throat. I guess his work is more important. There was silence for a moment, and then Lily said firmly, No, Claire, you're important. You're his wife. He should be here for you. Her words were meant to be comforting, but they just made me feel more alone. I turned to face her, my voice barely above a whisper. I don't know what's happening to us, Lil. It's like he's not the man I married. Lily squeezed my hand. Give him time, Claire. Maybe he doesn't know how to handle this. Men can be clueless sometimes. But deep down, I knew it was more than cluelessness. Alex's absence spoke volumes, and the message was clear. I was in this alone. The day I was discharged from the hospital, Lily came to pick me up. Ready to get out of here? She asked, trying to sound upbeat. Yeah, can't wait to see home, I replied, though the thought of returning to an empty house wasn't exactly comforting. As we drove home, Lily kept the conversation light, but my mind was elsewhere. I couldn't shake the feeling of dread about going back to a place that no longer felt like home. When we arrived, Lily helped me settle in. You need anything? Just call me, okay? I'm just a few minutes away. I nodded, feeling a mix of gratitude and sadness. Thanks, Lil. I appreciate it. She gave me a hug, a little tighter than usual. Take care, sis. And remember, I'm here for you. As I watched her leave, the reality of my situation hit me. My marriage was on the brink, and the only person I could rely on was my sister. The feeling of isolation in my own home was overwhelming, and for the first time, I began to accept that my life was changing and not for the better. Back at home, the silence was deafening. Alex was still at work, or so he said. The house felt neglected, dusty and unkempt, a stark contrast to the neat home we once shared. I decided to distract myself by cleaning, starting with our bedroom. As I was vacuuming under the bed, something small and shiny caught my eye. It was an earring, a gold one with a red stone. Not mine, definitely. My heart raced as a realization hit me. It looked exactly like the pair Lily wore often. Later that evening, Alex came home. I confronted him, holding the earring out. Alex, what is this? Where did this come from? He glanced at the earring and then at me, his face unreadable. I don't know, Claire. Maybe it's one of yours? It's not mine. I've never seen it before. My voice was firm, but inside I was shaking. He shrugged, avoiding my gaze. Maybe it's Lily's or one of your friends. I don't keep track of your jewelry, Claire. His dismissive tone infuriated me. You think I wouldn't recognize my own sister's earring? Or my friends, for that matter? Alex's expression hardened. I don't know what you want me to say, Claire. It's just an earring. Maybe it got mixed up in our stuff when we moved in. I knew he was lying. The earring was too distinctive, too familiar. Don't treat me like I'm stupid, Alex. This is Lily's earring. How did it end up under our bed? He sighed, rubbing his forehead. Look, Claire, I'm tired. Can we not do this now? I've had a long day. But I couldn't let it go. No, we're going to talk about this now. This is serious. 
He looked at me, his eyes cold. I'm not having this conversation, Claire. You're blowing this out of proportion. With that, he walked away, leaving me standing there, the earrings still in my hand. My mind was racing with thoughts. Was there something going on between Alex and Lily? No, it couldn't be. But the doubt had already planted itself in my mind. I couldn't sleep that night. The earring lay on my nightstand, a glaring symbol of betrayal. I recalled the looks exchanged between Alex and Lily, the times they were alone together. But I pushed those thoughts away. I couldn't accuse my sister and my husband without any proof. The next day, I called Lily. My voice was shaky as I asked, Lily, did you lose one of your earrings? A gold one with a red stone? There was a brief pause on the other end. No, why, did you find one? Yeah, under our bed. I tried to sound casual, but my voice betrayed me. That's strange. It's not mine, though. Maybe it's one of your other friends. Her answer didn't convince me. I knew her too well. Okay, just thought I'd ask. We said our goodbyes, but the conversation left me more unsettled. I felt trapped in a web of lies, unable to find a way out. The earring was a piece of a puzzle I wasn't sure I wanted to complete. The possibility that my husband and my sister could betray me was too painful to consider. For now, I decided to keep my suspicions to myself, hoping that time would reveal the truth. The days following the earring discovery were filled with unease. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. It wasn't just the earring anymore. It was the way Alex and Lily had been acting. I started to recall instances, little moments that I had brushed off before, looks they exchanged, whispers I couldn't quite catch. One evening, as I was sitting on the couch lost in thought, Alex announced another business trip. I have to go to New York for a few days. Big project, he said, barely looking at me. I nodded, trying to appear indifferent. When will you be back? In about a week. Don't wait up for me, he replied, his tone dismissive. After he left, I called Lily. I needed to talk, to see her reaction when I brought up Alex's trip. Hey, Lily, Alex is off to New York for a week. Business as usual, I said, trying to sound casual. Oh, really? That's a long trip, Lily responded, her voice faltering slightly. Yeah, it is. Hey, I was thinking, we could spend this time together, I suggested, watching for her reaction. There was a pause. Then Lily replied, a bit too quickly, I can't, Claire. I was planning to go see them next week. Already promised Mom. The coincidence struck me. Next week? When Alex is away? It's okay. Some other time, I said, my mind racing with suspicions. We ended the call, but my thoughts were in turmoil. The timing was too convenient, too coincidental. I remembered how often Lily's visits to our parents aligned with Alex's business trips. It couldn't be just a coincidence. That night, I lay in bed, unable to sleep. The pieces of the puzzle were slowly fitting together, forming a picture I didn't want to see. My husband and my sister, could they really be having an affair? The next day, I decided to take a more direct approach. I called Lily again. Hey Lily, I was thinking, since you're going to see mom and dad next week, why don't I come along? It'd be nice to spend some time together. Lily's response was immediate and a bit too sharp. No, Claire, it's not a good time. They're busy, and I already have plans with them. Let's plan for another time. Her tone, her excuses, they didn't add up. Are you sure? I really don't mind. Claire, I said no. It's just not a good time, Lily snapped, her voice tinged with irritation. The nagging suspicion about Alex and Lily wouldn't leave me. It was like a constant buzz in my head. One night, after Alex had fallen asleep, I made a decision that I never thought I'd have to. I crept quietly to his side of the bed and carefully picked up his phone. My hands were shaking as I unlocked it. I knew it was wrong, but I had to know. I went through his messages first, nothing, then his emails. Again, nothing out of the ordinary. But when I checked his browser history, I found it, a booking confirmation for a hotel in New York, for two. My heart sank. I put the phone back and went to the living room, trying to process everything. I felt betrayed, angry, and utterly heartbroken. How could they do this to me? To us? The next morning, 
Alex left for his trip as usual. I'll call you when I land, he said, giving me a quick kiss on the cheek. I forced a smile. Safe travels. After he left, I called Lily. I needed to hear her lie to me one more time. Hey Lily, I was thinking of coming over today. Maybe we could hang out? There was a pause. Then she replied, her voice uneasy. Actually, Claire, I'm heading out to mom and dad's today, remember? Right, of course, I said, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. Have a good trip then. Yeah, thanks. We'll catch up when I get back, she said quickly and hung up. I sat there for a long time, feeling a mix of emotions. I was hurt, yes, but there was also a sense of clarity. I knew what I had to do next. It wasn't going to be easy, but I couldn't let them get away with this. That evening, I made an important call. It was a step I never imagined taking, but I needed solid proof. After the call, I sat in silence, a plan forming in my mind. I was going to confront them, but not yet. I needed undeniable proof first. And when I had it, they would have nowhere to hide. The week felt like a blur. Every day felt longer than the last, each minute dragging on as I awaited the inevitable truth. Finally, the call came. We've got what you need, they said on the other end of the phone. After I hung up, a plan started forming in my head. I needed to confront them, but I wanted to do it my way, on my terms. A family dinner, that would be perfect. A place where they couldn't escape the truth. I called Alex first. Hey, when you get back, I was thinking we could have a family dinner. It's been a while since we all got together. Sure, sounds good, he replied, his voice casual. When were you thinking? How about the day after you get back? I'll invite Lily and Mike too. Great, I'll see you then. Next, I called Lily. Hey, I'm planning a family dinner for when Alex gets back. You and Mike should come. Lily's voice was hesitant. Sure, sounds nice. What's the occasion? Just felt like it's been too long since we all sat down together. See you then. The day of the dinner arrived. I cooked their favorite dishes, set the table perfectly, and waited. I felt a mix of nerves and determination. This was it, the moment of truth. Alex, Lily, and Mike arrived, all smiles and casual conversation. Dinner started off normally, everyone chatting and laughing, but I could barely eat, my stomach in knots. So, what's the special occasion? Alex asked, looking around. I took a deep breath. I have an announcement to make. Everyone went quiet, looking at me with curiosity. Before that, I have a question, I said, my voice steady. Lily, how was your trip to mom and dad's? It was good, relaxing, she replied, a little too quickly. I nodded, then turned to Alex. And your trip? Productive? Very, he said, nodding. I smiled, a cold, hard smile. That's funny, because mom and dad said they haven't seen you in months, Lily. And Alex, the detective I hired, confirmed you weren't alone on your business trip. The room went silent. Alex and Lily's faces went pale, their eyes wide with shock. Mike turned to Lily, his voice filled with disbelief. Lily, what's she talking about? I pulled out the folder with the photos and threw them on the table. That's what I'm talking about. My husband and my sister, together. The photos scattered across the table, revealing the undeniable truth. Alex and Lily, holding hands, kissing, there was no denying it now. The rest of the evening was a blur of shouting, accusations, and tears. Mike stormed out with Lily trailing behind him, begging for forgiveness. Alex tried to explain, to apologize, but I was done listening. I watched them leave, my heart heavy, but my resolve strong. I had lost my husband and my sister, but I had gained something to my dignity and the strength to start over. Tomorrow, I would start the divorce proceedings. Tonight, though, I just sat in the silence of my home, the weight of the betrayal slowly lifting off my shoulders. The evening after the explosive dinner, I sat in my living room, the silence echoing around me. I had done it, exposed the painful truth. It was over, but the finality of it all left me feeling hollow. I was startled out of my thoughts by a knock at the door. It was Alex, his eyes red, a mix of anger and sorrow etched on his face. Can I come in? His voice was low, almost a whisper. 
I hesitated but nodded, stepping aside to let him enter. He stood there, looking around the room as if seeing it for the first time. Claire, I... I don't even know where to start. You don't have to, I said, my voice firm. There's nothing you can say that will change what happened. He ran his hands through his hair, a gesture of frustration. I know I messed up. I know I hurt you. But you have to believe me. It wasn't... It didn't mean anything. I laughed, but there was no humor in it. Didn't mean anything? You had an affair with my sister, Alex. How could that not mean anything? He flinched at my words. I don't know how it happened. It was a mistake, a huge mistake. I love you, Claire. I shook my head, feeling a surge of anger. Love? Is that what love looks like to you? Betrayal? Lies? Alex took a step towards me, his hands outstretched. Please, Claire, let's try to work this out. We can go to counseling, we can... I cut him off, stepping back. No, Alex, it's too late for that. You made your choice, and now I'm making mine. He looked defeated, his shoulders slumping. So that's it? We're just... over? I nodded, feeling a strange sense of calm. Yes, that's it. We're over. I'll have my lawyer contact you about the divorce. He stood there for a moment longer, as if waiting for me to change my mind. But when I said nothing more, he turned and left, the door closing quietly behind him. I sat down, the finality of the situation sinking in. I had lost my husband and my sister, but I realized I had gained something too, my self-respect and a chance to rebuild my life on my terms. The next few days were a whirlwind of lawyers and paperwork, but I faced it all with a newfound strength. I was determined to come out of this stronger and wiser. In the end, I received most of the property and a fair settlement. It wasn't about the money or the house, though. It was about starting fresh, about reclaiming my life. I lost touch with Lily and Alex. The betrayal was too deep, the wounds too fresh. Maybe one day we could find a way to forgive, but that day was not today. I stood in my now quiet house, a mixture of sadness and hope in my heart. I had survived the storm, and now a new chapter of my life was beginning, one where I was in control, where I could find happiness on my own terms. As I looked around the room, I realized this wasn't just an end. It was a beginning, a beginning of something new, something better. And with that thought, I stepped forward into my new life, ready for whatever came next.